Hello and welcome back to our series on analysis of variance. Last, in the last video, we looked at multiple comparison tests using both Fisher's Least Significant Difference Test and Tukey's Honest Least Significant Difference Test. And while multiple comparison tests are useful in determining which groups differ, they test all groups at once, and this tends to pose problems. One problem we have is we can't control which groups we test. We're simply testing all groups at once. What if we know which groups we wish to test? Well, in this case, we can use what's called a linear contrast. These are similar to a t-test. However, these allow us to test a group or groups. In other words, perhaps I want to test to see if mu1 is different from mu3, or perhaps I'd like to test to see if mu1 is different from all other groups. So linear contrast can be used to make comparisons on k population means, i.e. mu1 to mu k, and it allows us to choose which groups we wish to test. Now, our linear contrast is nothing more than a linear combination such that the sum of a i mu i equals our linear combination. For all a equal 1 means we simply have a sum of the mean. So what does this actually mean? Well, we'll call this little l the sum of our a i mu i. In other words, a1 mu1 plus a2 mu2 plus all the way up to a k mu k. However, a i is going to be a constant such that when we sum these AIs up, we equal zero. Now, exactly what does this mean? Well, suppose we're testing a pair of means. Perhaps we have four means, and we'd like to see if mu1 is different from mu3. We'll let a1 equal 1, a2 equal 0, a3 equal negative 1, and a4 equal 0, such that when we add these four A's up, we get zero. And so we sum from i equals 1 to 4, ai mu i, and we get 1 times mu1 plus 0 times mu2 plus negative 1 times mu3 plus 0 times mu4. And that simply equals mu1 minus mu3. Perhaps we'd like to test one mean against the average of other means. So we're going to have mu i versus the sum of j equal 1 to k of mu j over k, where i does not equal j. So let's assume we still have four means, mu1, mu2, mu3, and mu4 and we'd like to test to see is mu2 different from the rest. Then we'll let a2 equal 1, and we'll have negative 1 third a1 plus negative 1 third a3 plus negative 1 third a4. And so what we get is mu2 minus mu1 plus mu3 plus mu4 over 3. Well, recall we were dealing with our crop data. And so perhaps fertilizer A is our control group, and we'd like to see if our control group is different from all other fertilizers. And so our linear contrast, the sum of AIs times mu i, is simply going to be, again, A1 equals 1, A2 equals negative 1 third, A3 equals negative 1 third, A4 equals negative 1 third, and we can see that we get 3 mu1 minus mu2 minus mu3 minus mu4 equals 0. Now, we'd also like to have a variance for our contrast. So we'll call L hat our estimate for our contrast. The variance for L hat then is the mean square error times the sum of our ai squareds over ni. Now, for ni equal to n, this simply means we have the mean square error divided by n times the sum of the ai squareds. We also need to create a sum of squares for our contrast because this is going to allow us to test for significant contrast. These sums of squares explains the amount of variation in the treatment means for particular contrast, and we're just going to denote this sum of squares as SSC. So sum of squares contrast, if we have unequal sample sizes, is going to be the sum across the treatments of AI times Y bar I quantity squared divided by the sum across the treatments of ai squared divided by ni. And that is going to simply be l hat squared divided by the sum of the ai squareds over ni. However, if we have equal sample sizes, then our sum of squares contrast is n times our squared contrast divided by the sum of the ai squareds. OK, so how would this work in R? Well, let's take a look. We're using our crop data. 
and we've gone through and we've done our analysis of variance. We've also used Tukey's and Fisher's to determine whether or not we had difference. We want to do linear contrast. Now, suppose I want to see if mu1 is different from mu3. Now, I'm going to call this A113. And the reason is because I'm looking at the difference of mu1 and mu3. So, A113 is going to be 1. A213 is 0. A313 is negative 1. A413 is 0. And when I run this, recall my L hat 13, that's my sample contrast for testing to see if mu1 is different from mu3. 1 times y bar a minus 0 times y bar b minus 1 times y bar c minus 0 times y bar d. And so I get a contrast value of negative 0.4925. I now need to find the variance of L hat. Notice mean square error divided by n times the sum of my contrasts. And so the variance for my contrast will then be 1.526107. So in order to find the sum of squares contrast for the difference in mu1 and mu3, I simply take n times the squared contrast divided by the sum of the squared contrasts, and I get a sum of squared contrast for mu1 minus mu3 to be 0.4851125. Okay. Now, I'd like to test to see if this is significant. So I'm going to use my F. And I'm going to look at the probability that this F is greater than the F I would expect with one numerator degree of freedom and degrees of freedom error in the denominator. And what I find is that I get a p-value of 0.4993853. This is an insignificant contrast. Well, now suppose I would like to determine if my control group, mu1, is different from all other groups. So I'm going to set a1 equal to 1, and then a2, a3, and a4 will be negative 1 third, respectively. And I'll run this. And then I'm calling this L hat all, because I'm testing the control against all others. And L hat all, then, negative 2.8175. Now let's find the variance for L hat all. Mean square error divided by N times A1 squared plus A2 squared plus A3 squared plus A4 squared. And we get L hat variance for all of 1.017405. Now let's look at our sum of squares contrast for all of these. Sum of squares contrast for all. 23.81492, and if I look at the probability of an F greater than what I would expect with 1 and 12 degrees of freedom, I see that I get a p-value of 0 0.00378468, which is significant. This would tell us that this is significant, and so what this tells us is that mu1 is different from all others. Okay. That's it for linear contrast. In our next video, we'll begin talking about randomized block designs. See you then.